What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to RBL Weekly, week two of the 2024 season. I am the commissioner of the Roast Battle League, Pat Barker, joined, as always, by the host and creator of the show, Brian Moses. I'm going to be quiet this show. Yeah. I'm exhausted. You, you've had a long week. It's been a tough one for me, everybody. We, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to let you have this one, Pat. Thanks, bud. I'm just sitting in on this one. We don't have to get into it too much, but um, we were in uh, we were in Arizona at the Tempe Improv on Wednesday for a very successful roast battle show, and then you went out uh, on the road doing some big comedy, uh, comedy shit, and then you uh, came here directly from the airport. I'm exhausted. After getting stuck in hours of L.A. marathon traffic. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. Oh, fuck you, L.A. Well, I think it's just L.A. traffic plus airport traffic. Plus the marathon on top of it. And the city sucks right now. Yeah. What do you mean right now? <laughs> it was good like 10 years ago. Yeah, when I first got here, it was, yeah. it was pretty... Fire in the 2010s. Yeah, these it was 20, awesome. Yeah, these twinky twinkies suck. I got, yeah, I got here in 2013. I was telling everybody like, oh yeah, you guys should all move out here. Shit <laughs> rules. And now it's like, yeah, now you guys made the right decision. Yeah, Stay absolutely. where you're at. Yeah. We're both homeless. We both live in this studio now. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Shout out to Def Noodle Studio for uh, letting us sleep here. Um... We have uh, seven great battles this week. We're going to do the same thing we did last week, 7-6-5, presented without commentary. 4-3-2-1, four, two, four, two, and one. there's a lot to talk about, so I'm not even going to waste time. Let's just jump into the, the first three battles, and then we'll talk to Brian Moses again <laughs> when we get down to battle number four. We're going to give you a chance to, uh, to sleep off the first three, all right? Thank you. Fantastic. Um, week two of the season, and we're going to jump right into it with the number seven battle this week. Uh, a city making their RBL weekly debut for the 2024 season. This is Tokyo uh, clocking in at number seven, picking up a point for their battle. Cat Rowan versus Manas. Here it is. Let's run! Being brown, Manus, despite not speaking any Japanese, feels really at home here in Japan because he's inside of a convenience store at all times. <laughs> uh, he's a full-time house husband, which means he's basically a sex slave. <laughs> and his wife is a very, very successful lawyer. In fact, the only thing... Uh, in fact, on a monthly basis, the only thing that's higher than her salary is Manus. <laughs> you have a slack sex slave, and the only thing I say is thank you will come again. <laughs> oh, 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 guys, 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 fucking calm the fuck down. All right, there'll be plenty of time for that. Oi, anyone been to this club before? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're having a better night tonight, aren't you? Yeah! Yeah, you know why last time you were here was probably because Cat was the bar manager. <laughs> yeah, it's way shitter back then, but I did miss a few things like uh, the attractions we had, like the slip and slide in the toilet, the urine slip and slide. Yeah, that one wasn't too bad. And um, what was the other one? Fucking oh yeah, man, the beers. You know, so much, so much head in your beer, more head than she's probably ever had in her life. Wow. <laughs> I kind of got back with that one, but we'll try again later. <laughs> Slip and slide, you're taking me back, man. Manus looks like when you're making a character in The Sims, you put all the sliders to one side. <laughs> Kat's so confused about her gender, she's take, taking hormones to stay female at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Mangela Davis. No worries, Ellen. The genderless. like a dandelion. <laughs> Not talking about his hair, but the only way he gets blown is by the wind. <laughs> Manus only has an afro so that he can say the n-word. <laughs> no, I had cornrows for a bit, so I just did it then. I don't do it now. Um, guys, man, speaking of, like, sexualness, Kat explains, like, she describes herself as a sexual being. 
I just don't see it. <laughs> I mean, like, did anyone feel those earthquakes last night? There was more movement in my pants there than when I look at Cat. <laughs> when I look at Cat Rowan, nothing in my pants growing. <laughs> Actually, well, I will say another bit. I'm so com comfortable with Cat that she slept over my house the other day and I woke up with chips in my penis because my penis got inverted that it actually made a bowl and we <laughs> ate chips from that together. <laughs> Too. That was fun. <laughs> Obviously, looking the way Manus does, he gets a lot of attention in Japan. Whenever he walks down the street, five salary men try to have sex with his hair. <laughs> Last time he had a health checkup, he was referred to a gynecologist. <laughs> yeah, five guys want to have sex with my hair. That's five more guys that are having sex with my hair than you. So, okay. Oh, Kat's got this joke, right? It's, um, oh, when I first found, I found my first white pube. Yeah, hell riveting, right? Hell fucking good joke. Anyway, <laughs> bullshit, I got fucking bullshit on that. Have any of you seen any of Kat's fucking boyfriends? The only requirement to be Kat's boyfriend is that you have to work as Santa as a mall at some point. They are old guys with white hair. All right? And... <laughs> You fucking seen a white cube before that. <laughs> fucking great joke. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Actually, um, that's all that I have. I was I was gonna have more jokes about Hindus worshipping cows, but Manas said I wasn't allowed to joke about his mom. Oh. I got one more. I got one more. I'm the last person. So guys, I'm sorry, but Cat's favourite dinosaur is called the long backosaur because just like her, she's got a long back that goes so far that she doesn't even have an ass. It's just a long back. Cat's body's got more curvature than the earth according to a flat earther. <laughs> so that was number seven this week, Cat Rowan versus Manas. One thing I love uh, is the competitive hunger that we're seeing already this season. Tokyo ran their show the equivalent of um, Friday afternoon, our time. Oh, right? okay. It's a night was, show out okay. there, time zones. And the deadline to submit battles is Friday at midnight. <laughs> they didn't have time to like get the multicams and edit it and everything. They have one camera up in the corner, live stream. They're like, fuck it, we're sending something in. Nobody wants to miss a week. Everybody is uh is is on their uh on their uh yeah. their best make sure behavior. you get a capture on that CCTV Japan. It's it's actually good. I know we didn't watch it here. You got to trust me. It's better than some of the good quality we have in some other cities. Bay Area. I mean, What's it's up? Japan. I mean, like they're they're building these things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they're children. Yeah. Um. So that was number seven this week. A lot of fun. Let's go stateside for the number six battle this week. This is the uh, the winner of week one. The number one battle last week was Austin. They come in at number six this week for another one from our most recent Mothership show. Uh, Darian Irwin versus Matt Bellick, two RBL Weekly veterans. Coming in at number six this week. Here it is. Battle! Battle! Let's roll! Oh, Darren, you motherfucker. Darren, uh, Darren's a flat earther. Uh, it's not his beliefs. It's just what happens when he walks up a hill. <laughs> Matt's the one guy who still can't believe it's not butter. It's not. It's not butter. <laughs> Darren, uh, Darren grew up in the Church of Scientology. Uh, he got kicked out because he kept raiding the Elrond cupboard. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Matt got banned from Chuck E. Cheese because he kept trying to play in the band. <laughs> hey, Chuck, let me slap at the bass, man. It's fucking rat <laughs> politics, man. <laughs> Uh, look at Darren. He's got a Carhartt hat, a Carhartt shirt. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but he's definitely gonna die of a Carhartt attack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You look like you're singing Poo Fighters. This guy stinks. <laughs> hey, 60 bucks either way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right, give it up for Slow Rogan, everybody. <laughs> <It's fucking good. laughs> As you heard, Darren has been riding his bike a lot lately, cross country. Uh, he, he's a real uh, Lance Chicken Armstrong. <laughs> <It's fucking good. laughs> what? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Matt had a heroin addiction. That's cool. I like that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he, he had to kick it though, not because he had to get off drugs, he's just so ugly he couldn't keep looking at himself in the spoon, you know? It was cocaine, I couldn't look myself in the mirror, that's what it was. It was not heroin, all right? <laughs> oh man, fucking Elmer Fudge over here, this fucking guy. <laughs> uh, he's uh, Darian, he, he's a real Pillsbury proud boy, this guy. He, uh, he, on January 6th, he stormed the Capitol Grill. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Matt listens to child porn on vinyl. It's got a warmer sound. It's got a warmer sound, dude. <laughs> yeah. that's, hey, that's the last battle of the fun, night. Yeah. So that was Darian Irwin versus Matt Bellick from our most recent Mothership show. You were there for that one. A um, lot of fun. Those guys always uh, always put on a show. It was cool. I mean, you know, I'm a big Darian guy. Obviously a big Bellick guy. Uh, and Bellick is a... He's a... He's a hero to a lot of our YouTube YouTube commenters. Yes. Yeah, they seem to love Matt Bellick. They love a pun. Love uh, his style, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Darian is always fun. I mean, I feel like he can never really lose, you know? His uh, his claim to fame, I think, in Rose Battles when he dressed down digits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought you were gonna you were gonna say his intro. Oh, I yeah, I hate that intro. <laughs> Stop doing that, Darian. <laughs> you guys have such a rutting uh, like it's crazy. Feud. He used to be so big, so like I would have said, like, oh, running, like he's never done that. But now Darian is like a, a triathlete at this point. I think he's so. getting fat again. You think so? It seems like he's kind of. I feel like he lost a whole bunch. He and looks good. I, I mean, oh, he, he does. He yeah. Looks, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's no Trey Pack I'm anymore. I'm just saying, as a guy who has gained and lost a hundred pounds multiple times over his life, you can I, tell. I, I, I see, I see it coming. I see okay. the writing on the wall. <laughs> he he rode his bike to Vegas. Well, that's what I'm saying. You lose all that weight when you're biking 300 miles a day, but then right. you know after that's over. Eh. All right. Either way, I paid you more than 60, or at least I will when they give me my it's check. My favorite. It's my favorite running gig because mainly how upset it gets you. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's go to the number five battle this week. I'm just checking these names because I know I'm going to fuck them up. This is number five. Barcelona last week um, did not make the top seven. They, they were pissed. They were they were not happy about it. Yeah, they were. Uh, they felt robbed. They felt slighted. They felt cheated. Um, they uh, but they did the right thing. No matter how they felt, they were like, let's get back on the horse. Let's send in another battle, and they sent us another one. That um, the, the the committee of people who rank it, uh, everybody seemed to enjoy it. And it clocks in this week at number five. It's going to pick up three points for Barcelona. This is Irene Meneguzzi versus Aurelio Lova. I never feel whiter than pronouncing Aurelio Lova. Wow. I think you nailed it. Really? I feel like I should have been rolling some of that shit a little bit more. No, that would have made it way more white. Yeah, fair. All right, here it is. Okay. Um... International Women's Day was just mentioned, and I want to point out the fact that I am the only woman in all the battles tonight. So, I find it kind of offensive that everyone got paired with a comedian and I got a broom. <laughs> okay, okay. He doesn't look like a broom. He identifies as a mop. <laughs> he likes being held tight by a creepy janitor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still more feminine than you. <laughs> you know, Irene comes from Argentina and her country is having a tough time right now. Last year, they had over 200% inflation and that's nothing compared to the 500% deflation of Irene's tits.
<laughs> it's good. It's good that you have them, though, or else I would have mistaken you for a transitioning hobbit. <laughs> Except the only way at this point that you're going to get a ring on your finger is if your IUD gets caught while you're fingering yourself. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. You obviously don't need contraception anymore. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Um, keep it going for Air Dancing Tube Man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you will see him working outside car dealerships, usually. Um, <laughs> Fun fact about Aurelio, uh, he likes to move around the city using only public transport, mostly the wind. <laughs> Aurelio, you don't need a sugar daddy, you need a protein daddy. <laughs> Thank you, Sam Dyke Gamgee. <laughs> Irene likes to date men her own age, which is tough because six-year-old men go for younger folks. <laughs> and I guess that's why when she goes to the hairdresser, she asks for the 15-year-old virgin boy look. <laughs> and you've even got the peach fuzz mustache to go with it as well. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Thank you. I have the mustache that you don't have. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Um, oh, yeah. This is uh, this malnourished uh, stick bug that you see here is Aurelio. Um, <laughs> um, in high school, Aurelio dated a girl. <laughs> who turned out to be a lesbian <laughs> it's okay they were young and confused you know um, Aurelio thought that he liked girls and she thought that he was a girl um, <laughs> she thought he, li he looked like a Frida Kahlo with less testosterone <laughs> You know, Irene doesn't understand why people like eating ass. She told me, like, I don't get it. It's so dirty. That's where shit comes from. Honey, I don't think you have to worry about that. I've heard your comedy and your shit comes out the other end. <laughs> her Argentinian boyfriend loves to eat her ass, though, because if there's one thing we know men on that part of the world like, is eating asses that look like they're defrosting in the Andes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on. Um, Aurelio's, Aurelio's uh, favorite dish uh, is fideo seco, which translates as dry noodle, which is also his name on Grinder. <laughs> um, one time Aurelio tried to get into a street gang uh, called the Latin Kings. Uh, he was rejected, of course, but he was accepted in a less violent one called the Latin Twinks. <laughs> um, Aurelio has a catchphrase. Uh, he likes to say, oh, snap, a lot. Aurelio, you're not in the, in the Disney Channel. Uh, you're allowed to say, oh, shit. <laughs> every time you misplace something inside your rectum? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Fisting Aurelio feels like... <laughs> <laughs> Fisting Aurelio feels like putting on a latex glove. You know, Irene has been told that she has resting bitch face, 
But honestly, I think we should all call, cut her some slack because she has a full-time job, a long-distance relationship, hosts her own show. So it's not resting bitch face, it's tired bitch face. <laughs> and after I'm done with you tonight, it's going to be you should retire bitch face. Fatality. <laughs> Probably. Um... <laughs> Uh, you guys, give it up for Tim Barton's Jack Skellington uh, <laughs> after several trips to Turkey. <laughs> oh, last joke. <laughs> um, Aurelio loves the catwalk, obviously, and by that I mean he loves to walk with his cat on his head. <laughs> Aurelio's style never goes unnoticed. He goes unnoticed. <laughs> He has to wear clothes, you guys. Otherwise, people think he's just a floating head. <laughs> <laughs> he makes great decoration for Dia de los Muertos in Mexico. <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned that Irene has her own show here. It's an all-female comedy show. And I think that makes her a beacon of feminism in the Barcelona comedy scene. She's showing that a woman's success doesn't depend on the amount of men she sleeps with. I mean, you sucked every dick in town and you still, no one knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> so that was number five this week, the uh, 2024 debut for Barcelona, Irene versus Aurelio. A uh, lot of fun. Now we go into the top four. This is what we're about to jump into, number four, a title match. We had a little bit of roast battle history. I put this on the RBL Commission account, but I just want to say this for anybody who didn't see it. Um, on March 12th, we had a first in roast battle history, two titles changing hands on opposite sides of the world here in LA and over in Manchester. Uh, Jack Wood became the champion in Manchester in LA. Sorry for the spoiler. Nate Welch defeated Ryan Nesson, which is the battle we're about to watch. Ryan coming off of an undefeated first RBL season, winning the world championship Getting off to uh, a rocky start, season two, with uh, this title defense. This is number four? This is the number four battle. Oh, this is week. a good show, you guys. This was a hell of a battle. It's good. I thought this was number it's one. It's good. No, we got, we got some good battles. That's sweet. We got some good battles. Oh, this, this is a good episode, you guys. You're going to, yeah, you're going to enjoy these top four. Um, this was a fun battle. There's a lot to talk about here, so I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's just jump right into it. Ryan Ness and Nate Welch, title match for LA. Here it is. The LA, this is for the LA championship. Nate! Ryan! Let's roast! Y'all keep it going for my opponent, the Roast Battle World Champion, Juhamid Ali. Hey. Ryan's Jewish, which is weird, because his face is anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, I am Jewish, but Nate, don't Jewish, you had an ice cold prime in your hand right now. Oh, we, we, we cut out yeah, the intro. Uh, <laughs> we have to explain that later. Nate, uh, if you're here, who's challenging strangers at a bar to arm wrestle? Uh, <laughs> Nate's so dumb, he listens to audio books on tape. Or, ah, he listens to coloring books on audio. God damn it. <laughs> well, there we go. Fuck. Right off the bat. <laughs> I've had too much prime, guys. <laughs> it's not great. You look like you asked for a refund at the strip club. <laughs> Ryan's favorite rapper is the Jewish half of Drake. And, and his least favorite rapper is the other half of Drake. Keep it going for Popeye the Trailer Man. Uh, Nate, you look like a Make-A-Wish kid. Uh, if chemo was cream-filled. That's, that's a good one, uh, Shia La Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Shia La Bitch. Ryan's a proud Hebrew. Yeah, bruh. He brew his own coffee, he brew his own IPA, and he brew his own uncle in fifth grade. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Three Jewish puns, huh? All right. Okay, let's keep it going. Keep it going for Darth Vapor over here. That's funny. Smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You've got two different types of apes. I've seen it. Oh, okay, I'm not going to get into this right now. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Nate's dad is a mechanic from Tennessee, and Nate is a uh, bouncer from West Hollywood. So at the end of the day, they're both covered in tranny fluid. <laughs> nice. Is that too much? What the fuck, dude? We're only clapping for puns tonight? Ooh, Ooh look... Ooh, look at me, I'm Ryan. I have an extensive vocabulary and erectile dysfunction. <laughs> That's perfect. E D perfect. E D E D E D. I, I bet if your dick was an R, you'd know how to make it hard. <laughs> right, right, Ryan's infertile. I had to Google what the fuck that was and <laughs> found out it's just a fancy way of saying his dick's broke. <laughs> now, nah, Ryan's dick's a lot like a TV remote with no batteries. Like, you could slap it around and yell at it all you want, but that bitch ain't gonna fucking work. <laughs> I, I, it's not, you know, I don't know much about the Jewish people, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I fuck your hot Mexican wife and impregnate her for you, would that make me a good friend or a uh, shalom wrecker? <laughs> God damn it. It's big pun, baby. <laughs> big pun, indeed. That was big pun. Shalom. Yeah, Nate had a lot of family die during Katrina, so he knows about bad swimmers. Uh, mm. That was your... Hey. Ooh. That was... Uh, hold Ooh. on, hold on. It's still my turn. Come on. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Nate loves uh, WWE. Uh, whacking women every day. Uh, yeah, Nate looks like he gets drunk and beats other people's wives. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the only reason he wants this belt is because the one he hits his girlfriend with isn't big enough. I really like that when Bruce controls the Wayne. <laughs> I deserve more. Okay. No, it didn't. Me and Ryan got both got though. degrees in communication. I was the first person in my family to get a degree. And Ryan's family got up to like 400 degrees. <laughs> mm. Damn. That was an oven joke. <laughs> Drunk Guam I mean, in the background. Happy birthday, Guam. Yeah. Yeah, Nate actually went to school to become a news reporter. <laughs> this just in, you're fucking retarded. Uh, <laughs> Live on Channel 8. Nate, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nate is a broke bouncer. The last time he made two Gs is when he carved the N-word in a bathroom stall. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Shout out to Brian Moses for counting the five jokes. Nicely done. Hey, it's tough sometimes. There wasn't a lot of rebuttals in that one. It is. You know, you know what? In Tempe, we were judging on the stage. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll help you out because I could see you were in mm -hmm. my line of sight. And there were a couple times you looked at me and I was like, I don't know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, you know, like those friendly matches are always tough because those rebuttals are always like they're hard to count. And you don't know if they're that person's joke. Because even opponents I'll see sometimes like, was that a rebuttal or is that your joke? Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, and so always I can tell a rebuttal when they say thank you such and such or thank you such and such. So right. like a salutation usually helps, guys. Um, yeah, the friendly battles can be like that. I wouldn't say this was a friendly battle. No, this is for a championship belt. This was a competitive. Um, it was a... You know, Nate won. Yeah. I was the deciding vote on that. I stand by that vote, wa I, I watching mean, it back. It's closer than it felt in the room. I'll say that. Yeah, Nate was big up in the room. Nate had the room, big time. Nate has become a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. Nate has a cheering section. Yes, he does. Um, and uh, I, I think that also when you're in the room, um, the failure of completely forgetting a joke is so magnified. Especially when you do that type of intro. I know we cut out the intro. But Tell him about it. What was it? So the intro is he wanted to, you know, he's uh, he wants to get us a sponsorship for Prime. Right. And because uh, Prime's got big money right now. They're sponsoring everybody. So shout out Ryan for trying. But that was a fail. Yeah. That was an L. Uh, and yeah, he tried. And every time, anytime anybody starts or that's their original intro, always doesn't work out for him. Yeah. Like Alex Hooper's first intro. Jamar's first intro, Earl's first, oh, Earl's first intro is pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but uh, they, they always have a hard time following up with like a great joke out the gate mm -hmm. because they're working so hard on their intro. And I don't even know what Ryan was trying with that intro. It was all bad. It was fanny pack prime. It was a shirt that was prime. He was tossing out prime packs, tossing out prime energy drinks. His first joke that bombed, then he's like, guys, I had too much prime. So <laughs> it was. 
was sticky to yeah, it was too sticky. I know, I know what he was going for because he actually told me like a week ahead of time. He's like, I think I'm gonna try this. And as the commissioner, I don't offer any feedback. I'm I, I would prefer that people don't tell me what yeah, they're gonna do, frankly. Please. But he, he sent this thing, and I I did not give him an opinion one way or the other. But in my head, I was like, oh, this shit's gonna this is gonna suck. This is gonna be bad. I I just I the the whole thing was like I have all these prime related rebuttals, and I think more than anything, it's just the idea of like you don't need to do that. Like you just pr proved you're maybe the best in the world at this, and it's almost like you beat the game on the highest difficulty. So now you're just doing side quests. Right. He got bored. Yeah. He got bored. Like yeah. we were playing basketball still. Now you're golfing. Right, exactly. That's not the same and, sport. And you know, you can't. There's trap games in this thing. You Damn. just you just got done a crazy schedule. He's got some other stuff coming up that'll be announced soon. Like he's got a lot on his plate. And in the middle, you got this Nate battle. And I'm not saying he took him lightly. This is like Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas, maybe. Yeah, I think right? so. right because I mean, Mike was Mike was supposed to battle Evander Holyfield, mm -hmm. but the uh, the the tune up according to Don, Don King was yep. Buster Douglas. Yep. And they couldn't sell enough tickets here in the states because Mike would always knock people out too fast, so you don't waste your money. Right. So they went to Tokyo where they just want to see these guys, right? And obviously, you can sell Buster Douglas, you know, if it's Mike Tyson. Uh, so then I see this maybe is that kind of it was a big upset. I even said it was an upset. I don't think I've ever said that in a roast battle. Yeah. But that felt like a really big upset. I didn't think Nate was going to win. I mean, I haven't seen Ryan lose all year. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the run he's on. But the difference is Buster Douglas didn't pull off a few big upsets on the way there. You Did know Nate what I mean? Do like, that on the way there, I Nate. So, oh, you okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, he 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 beat me. Yeah, um, he beat Elise Golgowski before that, which is like maybe not an upset, but she had been on a really good run. She has a really like good win loss record, everything like that. He's the streak breaker. He he is he is, and I I think the one thing is Ryan didn't learn from me. Um, I haven't gone back and watched my battle, and I don't intend to. Yeah, but. From what I remember in the moment, me reacting to like the puns on stage wasn't exactly doing me any favors. It just kind of makes you look like the audience is enjoying it. So you're coming out and telling the audience they're wrong for enjoying it. That's not going to make you look likable. You know what I mean? But you're coming from that rap battle thing of just like in the competitive nature of like my bars are better. Yeah, for sure. Right. Like for I'm sure. riding harder than this guy. Absolutely. But if you can't prove it, right, because you're right there being like, all right. Do a better pun then, or just do a better joke. And if you don't beat it, then it, then you do look like sour grapes. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I know, without even watching back, I know that's probably how I looked. I I think Ryan probably should have watched that game film and been like, I'm not going to do because he walked the exact same path. The, it was the exact. It was it was. Uh, that's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, like, and Nate was just waiting with the oh duh, I know big words like. <laughs> It's perfect because Nate also owns that part about himself. Like yeah. when he set up the one joke where he's like, Ryan's infertile. I had to Google what the fuck that means. <laughs> like he is embracing this image of be he's not as dumb as he looks. Clearly. He's he's playing it. Uh he's playing it up and it is working like a charm. Um, to the point where, you know, he's become that's a tough, tough opponent now. I mean, you battle him, so obviously, yeah. I'm yeah. talking I'm talking to the source here. Yeah, dude. He's um He's he's and, and his joke writing is good. That's the thing. Like we, you know, people want to dunk on it because there are a lot of puns. And there's mm -hmm. every now and every battle, there's a couple that I hate. I told him when I judge Shalom Wrecker. Yeah. I hate the fact that he set up this whole thing where it's like, if I fuck your hot Mexican wife, Oof. I don't understand what her being Mexican even had to do with the joke. I, yeah, that's just. <laughs> I, it didn't. It didn't add anything. He built up this like really tense sequence to get to Shalom Wrecker. I was like, fuck it. But anti symmetric yeah. was a great joke. Yeah, you did like that one. The 400 degrees was like. Uh, it's a hell of a Holocaust joke. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, I, I like yeah. uh, <laughs> Bruce controls the way. <laughs> okay, let's talk about control because Ryan asked me afterwards. He's like, what did that even mean? It's, it's a Bruce. He's he got he he brew his uncle. No, no, no when I, he was I, five. I get it. Yeah. He controls the weather. Right. Because he's Jewish. Mm -hmm. Controls the wane. Is that supposed to be rain? Is it supposed to be wind? If he brew his uncle in fifth grade, uh -huh. then why can't it? Why can't Bruce control the Wayne? I'm just trying to understand if Wayne is supposed to be rain or wind. What is Hebrew? Brew is blue. So then Wayne is rain. All right, that makes sense. <laughs> we just did Nate Welch math. I mean, that's, it's, <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> Damn, you're right. <laughs> if brew is blue, then Wayne is rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fucking Dr. Seuss book figuring out this guy's writing process. Oh, yeah. I love Shout it. out your real. Is that three million now? Oh, it's coming up on three. About, yeah. Yeah. Dr. Seuss controlling the weather. <laughs>
Um, Nate Welch is the new champion. Uh, nobody. Uh, what I what I what I love about Nate is he exemplifies exactly what you want out of a battler. He started at the bottom. He started, you know, at one level. He keeps getting better, and he always put his head down. He's never complained about anything. He just right. works and uh, you know takes the fights that he has in front of him and always gives it a hundred percent. So um, he's a, he's a good representative for LA right now. I know I know Ryan is hurting. Yeah. Ryan's already talking about like a rematch. I'm like, why do you want to do that again? That didn't seem fun at all. But I mean, he has to. Yeah, yeah. He's the cha- he's the world champ, and now it's like you're not even the champ of your own city. I know he wants it back already. You, I mean, you should. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, out the gate like that, right? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That you you didn't take him seriously. And that's the thing. Losing is one thing, but feeling like you lost to yourself afterwards is is another. So. Yeah, because he had. I mean, he had some some crosses in there. I mean, he there, did. there was. I mean, <laughs> Nate looks like he beats other people's wives. Yeah. I thought that was that was joke of the battle until 400 degrees. Yeah. I mean, I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Champ, oh, that was it. He fought back, yeah. But the the hole was just unfortunately a little bit too deep for Ryan Ness. And congratulations to Nate Welch, the newest uh, Los Angeles champion, getting off to a good start with the RBL season. And these guys uh, picking up four points for Los Angeles on this episode. Speaking of points for Los Angeles, we're going to talk about one of our new rule changes Uh-oh. after this battle because we we alluded to it last week. This is the first time it's being put into practice. This is the number three battle of the week, and it comes to us from New York. But it is a New York battler versus an L.A. battler okay. over on the East Coast. John Luna, former undercard champion here in L.A., out in New York for a couple months, did a main event at the New York Comedy Club against a uh, roast battle legend in Dan Wicks. It's the number three battle this week. Dan Wicks, John Luna. Here it is. All right. What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. John's family immigrated to this country for economic opportunity. John's gonna move to Britain so he can pay for things in pounds. Uh, we'll make this quick. Dan needs to get back to uh, trying to give Snow White a poisoned apple. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's, like a sp- uh, Dan's like a spaghetti noodle because he's Italian and he can't stop wiggling around. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> you know, John is uh, Tex-Mex. Yeah. He's a Mexican the size of Texas. <laughs> Dan is, Dan is demisexual, <laughs> vegetarian, vegetarian, and autistic. All these labels, but his tombstone's still just gonna read gross. <laughs> yeah, they can buy our tombstones in bulk. <laughs> All right. So uh, John, uh, John immigrated into this country illegally, but Biden pardoned him on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, John loves to gobble gobble and put people to sleep. <laughs> Dan's dad is a math teacher and his mom's an accountant. All that work with numbers and they still gave Dan the wrong number of chromosomes. That's a haymaker. Just glee. Round two. Five jokes all in a row. John's gonna get it started. Ladies Five John, jokes around. New York, you guys are monsters. They're insane out there. It's just this one club, man. Yeah, D- Dan Wicks. Yeah, I Wicks. You've never been born. Sorry, that was just a quote from his mom. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do you, hear the, uh, do you hear they're redesigning the Special Olympics logo? Yeah, it's going to be made out of all of Dan's rings. <laughs> oh, that's really good. <laughs> uh, I've heard that Dan dates out of his league. So I assume that means he's dated a human woman. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Dan's dad almost died in 9-11, and he also has an ex-girlfriend who's now on TV. So just like uh, Dan's dad, she got out just in time. <laughs> it is kind of sad, though. Yeah, Dan's dad did almost die in 9-11. He has PTSD from it. Uh, but Dan's the one that can't stop shaking. <laughs> All right, yeah, I shake a lot, but John barely moves voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Through that alley up there. New Yorks. All right, here we go. More jokes. All right. John. All right, settle down. <laughs> okay, here we go. John, John's last name is Luna, which means moon. Yeah. And like the moon, he's, he's covered in craters, made of cheese, and can increase the tide. <laughs> yeah. John is unlike the moon in that he's always round but never full. Speaking of full moons, John's like a werewolf if his weakness was silver dollar pancakes. <laughs> John is suicidal, I assume. <laughs> I mean, come on, why else would I have seen him buying a belt? <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. All right, but to get to get serious for a second, uh, John tried to kill himself once. It was scary. Yeah, they had him connected to a heart rate monitor. They shocked him, and it went. Da 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 da. -da. <laughs> Give a round of applause, y'all! <laughs> Guys, seriously, give it up for John. He's been awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah, roasting, yeah, roasting, when you're so fat, roasting is an uphill battle. Yeah. You know what else John thinks is an uphill battle? Flat ground. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Somebody loves it. <laughs> Dan always looks like he's trying to do a skateboard trick with no board. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Uh, that's what I wanted to hear. All right. Thank you, Danny Dorito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John looks like he counts calories, but only to beat his high score. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Dan says he loves indie rock. I think he just likes rock music, but he's always by himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I liked it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, John crossed the border. From overweight to obese. <laughs> yeah. John is actually the only immigrant chasing after ice cream trucks. <laughs> Dan's like Master Splinter because he looks like a rat, smells like the sewer, and is always looking for a teenager. Mm. Mm. Look at Luna. Yeah. <laughs> and you look like you need to come out of your shell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, John is attracted to men and women. Yeah, he's by sex XL. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's gay, but he clearly loves to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan's voice reminds me of my worst nightmare, uh, which is getting trapped in a conversation with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love you, but it was a funny joke. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, in summation, <laughs> John collects sneakers he doesn't exercise in. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what John will never collect? Social Security. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Dan likes rap music, uh, but the only bars he has are made of Xanax. If Dan was a rapper, his name would be Tupac Shaker. <laughs> All right. All right. Hell of a 13 jokes a piece. That's a lot. Uh, but that is a, a symphony. That's yeah. what that has to be. And uh, I thought they did excellent. Um, I thought when one had a great joke, the other had another great joke to kind of counter that, whether it be right after it or maybe, you know, uh, a, a joke or two after it. That was a lot of fun at times. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. As as most 13 joke battles would be. My God. Um, I think for these, and like this includes the Scotland like one rounders and another city we're gonna see in a minute. Mm -hmm. But like the even the one rounders where it's like, oh, we do five jokes per turn. Like, there's something really impressive if you can land seventy five percent of those shots. Right. You know what I mean? Because we even saw in, in Nate and Ryan, like they're, they're landing 60, 65 percent. Right out of five jokes. Yeah. Right. These so better we, all be bangers though. Yeah. 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 It's a lot to ask that there be no valleys in the peaks and valleys of a of a 13 joke battle but i thought more often than not they were both killing it i mean they're both pros uh wix obviously you know he's a vet uh luna's kind of a rising star we really love him down here in la uh man wix is so fun he is he <laughs> bouncing is. around he's got his bars you know he's slinging them and when john had something good i, I love that he would he would counter with something great i just i really appreciated that battle uh you guys I, I, everybody's doing that what do you mean? The three rounds, the fifteen jokes. No, it's uh, so it's the New York Comedy Club, mm -hmm. the actual club, mm -hmm. not the people who book the show. Right. The club is yeah. like we don't want to change, so All that's right. why we started doing Grove Thirty Four because we're like, fine, we need yeah. somewhere because these guys are are pros. Yeah. But if you're coming up in New York, it, your first battle can't be thirteen jokes. Yeah, it's, it's insane. So Grove 34 has been instrumental in helping to build that scene mm -hmm. with the more traditional five joke battles. But they still do twice a month at New York Comedy Club. And uh, every now and then you get a, you know, two people who belong in that spot and have a really, really good battle like that. Yeah, that is a that is definitely an exercise in joke writing. I mean, my goodness, that's wow. And to and think about John Luna that much. <laughs> They about Dan Wicks that much. I mean, those were yeah. some great, great hits. Oh, man. And I, I also have to say the one thing that I miss about the three-rounder is it really did separate people when they were coming up. Like, you know, we've seen Luna out here, former undercard champion, you know, but you see a battle like that and you see him maybe in a whole new light because it's like, oh, damn, you're like, you're for real with this. But that's because we used to give that three-round opportunity to people out here, uh, which we discontinued a while ago. Right. And it's, you know, it's a test. How do you how do you measure up in a more challenging environment like that? So it, that I think when we had it, it was the right time. Yeah. But I think when we got a little too big, it, uh, we want to keep people's attention. Sure. I think those are tough when if if we're not going to nail them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, shout out to those cats for nailing it. But yeah, that's that's tough to ask, uh, what, especially our talent pool right now. For to sure. Ask them to do, you know, 15, Listen, 13 it's, jokes. It's high risk, high reward. And the reward was really high on that one. They pick up the number three spot this week. Now, really quick, because I want to touch on again, the rule change this season. Now, last okay. season, that would have been five points for New York. And that's it. Luna's performance wouldn't have gotten any points for L.A. The battle featured a New York battler was in New York. They would get all the points. People didn't like that. They said, hey, if you got people going on the road, you should get some points, too. OK, there was a comment last week on this podcast where they said the person going on the road should get more points. Wow. Which I I, I get it. But you got to keep in mind, New York is the home city is the one submitting the battle. So you're not going to submit one where a rival is going to get more points than you. So we landed on New York gets the five. L.A. gets a bonus two and a half. OK. 50 percent of the points get added as a bonus. And the other bonus for if you're the road team, you still get to submit a battle with your city. So now L.A. gets the four points for Nesson versus Welch and two and a half for this one. Wow. So it ends up being a pretty big week for them. So nice. A lot, lot of I, I think it works on every side there. Uh, there's every reason to um, submit battles with other cities. You're still going to get the majority of points, but there's every reason to go on the road and try to pick up some points, steal, steal some points on the road, which is what uh, Luna did for uh, for L.A. I hope you guys got all that. I'm not doing math with Pat, with Pat ever again. I'm telling you, I don't think it's that difficult. It's not. I, In I, my I brain, it makes perfect sense. Keep running this back, okay. everybody. Keep running it back every week now, because we're going to keep talking about points and, and decimals and Hebrew and Wayne. <laughs> well, let's go to one of our expansion cities. They're making their RBL Weekly debut um, with a, a really, really good battle. We just watched two good battles. Wait, these are my boys in Montreal? No. Damn it. 
These these are our friends in Manchester. Oh, Manchester coming in at number two this week. Big debut. Um, Michael Mannion, who co-runs the league over there. Um, I had a lot of Zoom conversations with this guy when we were you know interviewing them for the league. He battled against a guy named Monty Wilson, and I'm not going to spoil any of it other than to say prepare for the most British battle we have ever experienced on RBL Weekly. Cheers. Here it is. It's Monty Wilson versus Michael Mannion, everybody. One, two, three. Battle, 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 battle. Battle. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. I'm Michael, the one that Jordan wants to fuck. Um, <laughs> Let's go, boys. Right, uh, first, first things first, uh, Monty said to me, let's dress like uh, posh white guys. Um, he's not dressed like that, I can't believe it. Um, he, you know, you've dressed like someone who knows where all the good coke is. Uh, you know, In I, there. I've, <laughs> I've turned up dressed like the demon headmaster. Um, <laughs> you've done me right up the fucking chutney, Monty. Um, <laughs> All right, let's get this posh off over. Winner gets a plot of land. Um, <laughs> Time to roast this eight no black on the Union Jack. What if Millwall fans started a theatre company, Posh Wanker? Yes. Monty, Monty looks like he'd use the N-word if someone cut him up in traffic. <laughs> Monty looks like the state of the British Empire. He's a kind of slightly greasy mess. When I fir first met Monty, I thought, I bet he's got a clammy handshake, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Monty Wilson looks like soy boys have released their new range of cuckolds. <laughs> Not only does he look like he'd invite men back to his flat to bang his girlfriend, he looks like he'd take a selfie in the corner of the room, upload it to social media, and put the caption, good wine, good food, good company. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? Uh. <laughs> is he a Kingsman? That's, yes. That's excellent. Thanks for being here tonight, Michael. Taking a note of Googling, how do I know I'm not gay? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Michael looks like Harry Potter halfway through transitioning. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hannah Gasby. Michael looks like the cross between a praying mantis and an uncooked quiche. <laughs> <laughs> Michael looks like the kind of guy who showed his solidarity to Black Lives Matter by watching his first ever interracial gangbang. <laughs> uh, Monty's dad was in the SAS. Uh, how the apple has fallen far from the tree. Uh, Monty was in a lot of musicals. Specifically, he was in Annie. And he still knows all the words. For example, when his girlfriend asks him when is it going to be her turn to have an orgasm, he sings, Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, she's like, it's always a day away. <laughs> Musical theater lovers in the middle of it. Let's go. It's a shame he never got to play Oliver. He's got a lot more made for that role. Um, can I please have some more love, Father? Uh, <laughs> uh, the only time him and his dad bonded is when his dad would hit him to the tune of "It's a Hard Knock Life." Ooh. In his set, Michael claims to have a cunty aura, uh, which I think is true to some extent, because like any cunt that's ever been near Michael, he is very, very dry. Mm. <laughs> Michael can be quite stingy, especially when he, when he used to do drugs. The only way Michael would have ever shared drugs with a woman is when he spiked her. <laughs> Watch out, girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I often play football with Michael and he can be quite a bad loser. The only time he's not a bad loser is when he's playing Soggy Biscuit. Ooh. I see you know what that is. <laughs> Monty, uh, Monty lives with his Eastern European girlfriend. Uh, some people frown on this whole sort of male order girlfriend thing, but in Monty's defense, he hasn't been able to buy black people for 300 years. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> um, Michael's ex used to call him Sugar Daddy, only because he has the physical dexterity of a fucking jelly baby. <laughs> <laughs> Michael has all the charisma of someone who's had his ass ravaged by a boarding school tutor. 
So much so that his farts now just sound like... <laughs> Michael looks like his asshole smells. <laughs> Weirdly like his uncle. <laughs> um, one more. <laughs> Michael told me that his sex life is pretty vanilla, which is appropriate because that's the favourite flavour for most children. Ooh. <laughs> Shit. Doesn't, doesn't help that I'm dressed like I'm hiding a scandal for the Vatican. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one saw anything. Um, uh, Monty is from Norfolk. He's Norfolk through and through. He doesn't have the accent, but he sleeps with a gollywog teddy bear. <laughs> Money, money is actually from Nor Norwich, uh, which you can probably tell from his face and his mashed up teeth. <laughs> the closest money has come to depression was when he was friend zoned by his sister. <laughs> money lost his virginity at the age of 15 uh, on the day that his granddad died. Uh, in his defense, Grandma thought she'd locked the door. Oh. <laughs> Michael looks like an embryo who went to Eton College. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and grew up with a gold ring being smacked around his face by his stepdad <laughs> whilst in school a sex tape of Michael's sister was sent around and everyone tried to bully him for it but he didn't care he was just rest assured that he was a fantastic director <laughs> Michael does have a girlfriend, although he is so pale she could be considered not in a relationship, but single and haunted. <laughs> uh, Monty has a lot of kinks. Uh, he gets really turned on when girls yank on his moustache. <laughs> Monty is so posh that his release word is panache. <laughs> Monty looks and sounds like he enjoys getting fucked with a Union Jack-themed strap-on. Panache. <laughs> Specifically with One Night at the Proms on in the background. He says Jerusalem is a good track for foreplay, but he immediately comes when Rule Britannia kicks in. Mm. Monty was actually raised on games of Soggy Biscuit, but he played using his left hand just to guarantee a big breakfast of cum. It's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> In his set, Michael claims Pingu would be great at blowjobs. I... I know. I think he needs a new girlfriend. Um, what's black and white and red all over? Pingu's arsehole. <laughs> Michael is a big fan of video games. I presume he's the only person who's ever killed a prostitute on Grand Theft Auto and said, Oh, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Michael C might seem like the kind of guy who could be racist or misogynistic, but he's none of those things. The only thing Michael is phobic against is, of course, puberty. <laughs> oh my God. Michael lives with his girlfriend and has done for a long time and actively sponges off her. And by the look of him, not just her money, but also her estrogen. <laughs> That's us, everybody. Yes. Michael. Number two battle of the week. Yeah. Manchester, that is a hell of a debut. That's a, yeah. Ooh, boys. Michael and Monty, that was, that's how you do it. Slug that's fest. how you joust. That's how you, ah, that's how you spar. Gentlemen, well done. Two soggy biscuit references? <laughs> the I musical was, number? I was one, oh, the musical number. When, when Michael said right off the bat, before he even did a joke, when he was talking about how they agreed to dress, and he was like, you've done me right up the fucking chutney, Monty. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm in for a ride right now. I don't know what's about to happen. And then he's like, time to destroy this posh wanker. I'm like, oh, oh fuck. We're, Dude. we're both so yeah, rich. Like, yeah, <laughs> winner gets a plot of land. Oh, my God. I love you, too. I've never heard a more British joke than the, the Grand Theft Auto one where he's like, oh, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that battle was outstanding to me. Um, easily could have been number one. It was split voting. You know, I send these to people. They rank them. It did receive a couple of number one votes. What an unbelievable debut for Manchester. And when I... Talk to these scenes in the offseason. I'm looking for potential. And we watched some of the offseason stuff for Manchester. But 
my God, the step forward in everything. That, like, was, a, that was like real preseason. Like you guys just weren't, you guys were like, it was like a vanilla playbook. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was one camera kind of like up in the corner and like, you know, the audio was okay. And I'm like, hey, can you guys work on this? They're like, oh yeah. I wasn't when they come out, thinking like about fully Manchester. Edited. Dude, Manchester and also the same thing we've seen in the States with all these cities that are building these fan bases. Their first show officially as Roast Battle Manchester, the venue caps at 144 people. They sold 186 pe tickets. People were standing on top of each other to watch Yo, this thing. Really? Manchester's going to be a problem, Moses. I'm just going to come out and say it. Yo, that that reminded me of like when I saw Montreal for the first time. Mm, yeah. That was so impressive, Michael and Monty. <laughs> I almost fell asleep. My God, that woke me right back up. That yeah. was... I felt like caffeine or like, like that was insane. You two, good job. Yeah, they 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 absolutely crushed it. London is going to. It's not going to be an easy path to repeating. They just know how to write a hell of a joke. I mean, like they they write one man shows. Like they write shows. That's what they called them when they write their stand up. They're called shows, and they're literally writing for an hour of like what this is going to look like, and that's how they edit. And that was so fun. You got to see the juxtaposition of a guy with a book. Yeah, like Monty because he is a thespian, uh -huh. and then you got to see Michael, who's this posh cunt right yeah, he's got a yeah. cunty aura and he's got his little iphone 5 or whatever that was and he's just <laughs> he's just i mean my they, those boys can write dude and it's the scottish style of we're just going to do a bunch of jokes per turn they're going to be great what what shocked me is that they were so much more like scotland than they are like london and london has really become more like the states yeah they got these short quick jokes their battles are three or four minutes this thing was double that triple that um Coming up this week, and this ties into the New York versus L.A. thing, Manchester is actually traveling to Edinburgh for Scotland's debut. Oh, wow. So this week, there are multiple Scotland versus Manchester battles going down. Um, so Manchester is going to have a really good opportunity to steal points on the road. They still have a bunch of battles that I haven't seen from this event that they told me are very good. Really? Yes. Okay. And London does not have their debut show until March 29th. Oh, the battle for the UK. They are going to be playing from behind. And meanwhile, Tokyo, I feel so bad for Tokyo. They're like, we had a great event. And it's like, where they're on the board. They get number seven. They're like, if we can just get to a head start over London, we can, you know, what? and then here comes Manchester out of nowhere. Like, yeah, the soccer hooligans. Yeah, I mean, dude. that was, wow. I see why, yeah, people, yeah, wow. You guys, that was cutting. That yeah. was, I'm, that not, not a problem. They're scary. Yeah, like that's that was scary. You two, Mo Michael and Monty, that was scary. Good, great, great stuff. Congratulations to Manchester, Michael, Monty, all of these guys. Jack Wood, their new champion over there. Big Looking Wood. forward to seeing a lot more of Manchester as the season goes on. But we uh, turn to number one now, and this is a city that we saw a lot of last season. They came up just short of the playoffs. They are men on a mission this season. They are coming out. They had the number three battle last week, number one battle this week. Last week, it was uh, two new people in the Chicago tournament that we saw Fujiko and Zoe Dodson making their RBL weekly debuts. This time, it's two familiar names that we saw last season. Max Sorich, Eric Emerson from Chicago. Number one battle this week. Here it is. <laughs> Uh, it's great to be here roasting the annoying kid from the Polar Express. Uh, <laughs> Eric, Eric actually uh, met, his, he's dating a Jewish woman. They met on the brown line. Uh, she was a total stranger, and he just manned up and introduced himself to her and asked her out. And if you ask me, that is the worst thing to ever happen to a Jew on the train. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's nice to be roasting the conductor that tried to keep the black kid off the Polar Express. <laughs> That didn't make the animated cut, but it happened. Uh, this is Max So Rich, guys. Middle name, uh, Max, his dad is so rich, he doesn't have to work for a living. And no, sending out applications to Love Island is not work. It's true, if need be, I could pull a few strings. Uh, the only string Eric pulls is his girlfriend's tampon when he wants a snack. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, honestly, I really hope Eric wins this. He's been doing comedy three times as long as me. He needs this a little more than I do. If I <laughs> if I lose, it'll just light a fire in my belly. But if Eric loses, it'll light a fire in the chamber of the handgun he puts in his mouth. Nice. Oof. 
<laughs> Look into your future, bitch. You need it as bad as I do. <laughs> it's coming. All right, so this is true. Max's uh, dad works with special needs kids, and his mom works in entertainment. So maybe they could put their heads together and get this fucking retard a career. <laughs> Eric is, uh, Eric's the kind of guy who'll say that the book was way better than the movie. <laughs> Max would too if he could fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like movies if no one made fun of you for reading books alone. I fucked that up so bad. <laughs> oh. Oh, we've hit a glitch, so this is probably a good time. This joke is not really for Max. This is for the two or three aliens piloting the human suit. Uh, it's the eyes. They don't look real. They have to blink sometimes. We can all tell. Uh, Eric's been going to the gym recently. Uh, he's actually, he's been doing this thing where he wears ankle weights. We just, we all call them socks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> His favorite exercise is actually the wait in line to complain to his alderman about refugees. <laughs> oh, it looks like you're stealing their jackets. Uh, <laughs> I think there's a reason God blessed Max with uh, such good looks, you know? I guess the good Lord figured if it was gonna be the last thing those poor black churchgoers ever saw, it might as well be easy on the eyes. Oh, man. <laughs> Mm. That was the dark one, folks. That was good. <laughs> Eric's, a, Eric's a real the pen is mightier than the sword kind of guy. Um, <laughs> what, he did, what no one's told him is that no one fucking likes hanging out with the pen. <laughs> the pen will corner you at parties and complain about how fast the vaccine got rolled out. Hey, Max would like the pen if he could fucking write. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Max recently contracted uh, herpes. Well, yeah, he's trying to track down the, uh, the girl that gave it to him, and so is her family. Maxwell, please, they want closure. Where's the body? <laughs> God, dude. So, you know Eric doesn't have uh, herpes, because herpes requires having sex without a condom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with garbage can whores, you animal. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little real there. <laughs> uh, Eric, uh, Eric kind of looks like Clark Kent, you know, just the face, but he kind of looks like Clark Kent. He's actually, he is wearing a suit underneath his clothes, except it's not embroidered with one S, it's embroidered with two S's on the lapel. <laughs> <laughs> that would have looked better, been better if you didn't look so much more Nazi -y than me. <laughs> Dude, we both look like Nazis, you just look like the accountant. <laughs> And you're blowing all our fucking money because you love killing Jews so much. <laughs> hey, in high school, Max was both a wrestler and a water polo player. So if you're wondering why you look so fit, it's from pushing the gay urges down for so long. <laughs> it looks like you tried to suck dick in the locker room and it got you in both eyes. <laughs> Erica. <laughs> Eric definitely eats pussy like he's punching in a, a cheat code to a video game. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Did you come? No, nope. God, this thing's fucking broken anyway. <laughs> the difference between me and Max is that I look like I eat pussy. So that's... You look like a pussy. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> How long you been sitting on that gym? That's... How long you been sitting on that guy, Jim? Oh, man, so yeah. That's the knockout. Hey, Max is, uh, he's kind of a big dude. He looks like the guy who could really destroy pussy, you know? And probably the rest of the body and the clothes and anything else that had his DNA on it. <laughs> Eric, uh, Eric definitely, this is the seventh joke, right? Eric definitely, definitely does not like spicy food. Uh, the only pepper he touches is the pepper spray on his keychain when he walks by a black person. <laughs> Oh. As I said, Max has uh, contracted the herpes virus. 
<laughs> Own that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow Kennedy there. Yeah, when right? asked for a comment, Herfy said, yeah, this is a real low for me. I can do better. <laughs> All right, that's a battle! All right. Tournament quarterfinals. Max Sorich picking up the victory over uh, one of the best in Chicago, Eric Emerson, moving on to the final four. What'd you think? Love Big E. E squared, Eric Emerson. Yeah. Two Bike Stevens on uh, IG. Mm -hmm. uh, big fan. Know the guy personally. Uh, that was a tough one for him. Um, Max just kept hitting him back. Uh, he had a lot of confidence, I'll say. Right? Yeah. He was a lot of confidence going in there because it was like you going against Nate. Right? I know I'm a better writer than this guy. He's not going to beat me on, on writing, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm probably going to beat this guy down. Do not put words in my mouth like that. How dare you? All right, whatever. I'm just calling him like I see him. But uh, that was a lot of confidence on Eric's part. And Soros just was kind of hanging in the pocket and just kind of listening. And then just he just took his shots where he was supposed to. Let I the will, game come to him. I will say this. One thing both of these guys are good at is um, there is a really difficult skill that I think very few battlers in the entire league possess. And it's the ability to rebuttal, <clears throat> excuse me, not pre-write rebuttals, but just in the moment think of a response to the person and make it funny and biting. And I think a lot of people are trying it and a lot of people are failing at it and it leads to like awkward silences in battles. I think these guys are both very good at it. Oh yeah. And those back and forths ended up being the highlight of the battles. No disrespect to the the previous, like the written jokes they came in with, they were great, but I think it was those back and forths, especially um, the thing with you look like they look like a eat pussy, you look like a pussy, and then sitting on the guy gym or whatever, like all of that, which you know they just kind of like were freestyling up there. That ended up being the highlight of the battle to me. Yeah, and I think you know because we've been doing the show for about an hour now. It's uh, you know we've heard so many Holocaust jokes. Oh my god, and, yeah. You yeah. know, so at this point, it's almost like we're a little beat down. But um, yeah, dude, I, I can imagine. I mean, but the things that we hadn't heard during this show, and uh, you're right, those uh, those off the cuff moments. Um, those inspirational moments. I mean, that was a lot of fun to watch both those guys uh, kind of just play off each other, and those were the highlights of the battle. Yeah, and we just watched four battles. Now, those last three were super long, right? But imagine everybody who ranked the battles this week, shout out to everybody who's helping me with this because we all watched 12 battles. Okay. We had 12 submissions this week, um, and if you think you saw a lot of X, insert X joke here, we saw, believe me, it, it, it gets out of control very, very quickly. But um, I think overall, everybody did a great job. There was a lot of, uh, you know, discrepancy between Chicago, Manchester as the number one battle. They were one and two on every single ballot. Um, Chicago edged out Manchester by one vote for the number one spot. I think it could have easily gone to Manchester. But to me, those were clearly the top two this week. So shout out to both of those cities. They did a great job. Yeah, shout out Manchester. <clears throat> that, was, uh, that was great work, you guys. Monty and Michael. Monty and Michael announcing their presence with authority. Let's look at the standings, and we will start internationally. Now, uh, not a lot to see here. As of yet, Scotland has yet to get going. London has yet to get going. The two playoff teams from last year. Um, so we are looking at the other ones. Uh, your boys in Montreal off to a little bit of a slow start there in the International West. But as you can see, that division, nobody exactly running away with that one yet. Wow, Barcelona. Barcelona. Ahead, and we were talking trash. I was not talking trash. You guys misinterpreted everything I said. But congrats to Barcelona. At the end of week two, they are atop that division by one point over Toronto. We go to International East. Tokyo getting on the board uh, with a point, but obviously it was Manchester's week. They uh, they they make an insane debut, pick up six points. Let's flip now to the American standings. Wow. Los Angeles, by virtue of the two and a half points on the road from John Luna, plus the four points in L.A., they pick up six and a half, and they leapfrog Austin in the Bay Area. Austin picks up two for their battle. Bay Area unranked this week. Denver off to a little bit of a slow start uh, in the West. Interesting. And then we go to the East, and all I can think about in the East is you're Cleveland, you're Atlanta, you are expansion cities, you're just trying to get your feet wet, you're just kind of excited to be here. You look up, Chicago's got 12 points already. I mean, they're running away with this thing. That's crazy. They're, I think at the tournament, though, man, that thing is, uh, that's going to bring a lot of points, I think, early in the season. Uh, and then hopefully, I think Cleveland and Atlanta are going to battle, are going to going to balance that out. I think as the season continues, because they're not running a tournament, you know, <clears throat> every month of the year. There's a saying in baseball: you can't win a pennant in April, but you can lose one. Right. I don't know how much I agree with that, but if you are Cleveland or Atlanta, you don't want to put too much pressure on in week three of a 34 week season. 
but you kind of want to get on the board next week. You kind of want to cut into that a little bit because you do not want to repeat it this week where next thing you know, you have one point and Chicago has 18. I mean, yeah, Chicago out the gate already. I, I mean, they, they're strong, man. They are I mean, strong. come on. I yeah. mean, that, that was a hell of a battle between uh, Sorish and, uh, and Emerson. So you got to compete against guys like that right now. And then Fujiko, who's like, who That's might be rookie of the it's, year. It's one thing to be yeah. like, well, we got to deal with the Emersons of the world. Like, you're prepared for yeah. that. And then it's like, oh, yeah, we just grabbed these two. You know, nobody's ever seen them before. They're great, too. Yeah, we were thinking about uh, Katie Kincaid and and, uh, and Greco. Brandon and Kiefer. Those and, yeah, Kiefer yeah. and Tito. Yeah, there's there's so many people out there. They're killing it. So, yeah, now, now Fujiko, is, uh, she's a threat. Yeah, and, and their final four in the tournament, by the way, has a, a few names that are are not RBL stables. So they are developing new talent there. They're going to be scary this season. Um, yeah, two weeks down, 32 weeks to go. Uh, exciting stuff. I appreciate you. You really woke up those last couple battles, man. Man, Michael and Monty. You guys, that was coffee. That was tea. That was black tea. <laughs> spot of tea in the afternoon. That was a spot of tea. That was my tea time. Thank you, gentlemen. Awesome. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we'll be back next week with another week of uh, great battles. Check out our latest drops. Every uh, every Thursday, we're dropping a full episode from either the Belly Room, the Mothership, or uh, Jam in the Van. Every Tuesday, we have a new podcast right here. Follow me on Instagram at RBLCommish. Follow at Roast Battle. Anything to say before we get out of here? Let's roast! Let's roast!